Hello wonderful person, today we're going to be once again talking about some of the more recent discoveries in regards to the mysterious dark matter. And in this video we're going to discuss the paper that was recently released that focuses on trying to identify what tiny pieces of dark matter might look like as well, not just the larger pieces that we usually are concerned with. Here, the scientists behind the paper, you can find it in the description, decided to try to create simulations and identify some of the smallest and the least massive halos of dark matter that the universe could have produced. And the main reason they wanted to do this is to try to identify the actual origins and of course the composition of the dark matter itself. So let's discuss this in more detail and discover what the scientists found as well. Now, first of all, this right here is essentially the nutshell of what the scientists were able to create. By using extremely complex supercomputers, they were able to simulate a virtual universe, and then they were also able to zoom into a very, very small parts of the simulation and discover what the really small parts of the dark matter would look like, assuming, of course, the simulation here created relatively realistic representation of the dark matter. Although right now we don't really know how accurate this is. But the physics it's based on and the understanding of the universe is based on is pretty much spot on. But normally when I talk about dark matter or whenever there is a new video about discoveries regarding dark matter, there is still a little bit of skepticism from people that might not actually think it's real. Well, I wanted to actually address this because it's really important to understand why a lot of physicists and a lot of scientists today believe that dark matter is the best explanation. Now, I'm not going to go into the details about the observational evidence because there's quite a lot of it and most of it points at the existence of dark matter, if not all of it. I'm going to talk about the actual particle reasons we believe that dark matter exists. Specifically, in regards to various discoveries coming from particle accelerators around the planet, most of which came from the Swiss CERN particle accelerator. Now, surprisingly, here in Google Earth, you can even go on a tiny tour and go inside of CERN, discovering what all of this looks like on the inside as well. If you do have some free time, I encourage you to check this out because it actually looks pretty awesome. But anyway, the idea here is that over the past few decades, CERN discovered some really, really incredible things about various particles that technically could be created somewhere in the universe. And the more we discover how many different particles could be technically created in extreme cases of the universe, the more we realize that there are just so many different opportunities for dark matter to exist, simply because there are so many different particles that could explain its existence. Now, all of the matter we're familiar with here on planet Earth for the most part can be summarized in these two familiar states. But in reality, in the last few decades, we started to discover a lot of really unusual states. Some of them, such as tetraquarks, can actually create a lot of different particles, many of which could have properties that could easily explain what the mysterious dark matter could be made out of and how it could affect the rest of the universe. But as we make more and more discoveries, the physicists started to realize that there are currently just way too many possibilities. So many, as a matter of fact, that it's somewhat difficult to look for the actual dark matter itself. In other words, it's become somewhat impossible to pinpoint what exactly dark matter could be made out of. There are currently way too many candidates and not enough experiments trying to test each of the candidates. And all of these experiments are usually pretty expensive. So what we've discovered from CERN and from other particle accelerators in the last few years and in the last few decades, more and more seems to suggest that dark matter could be some sort of a really exotic particle after all. Possibly even something that we could eventually create inside a particle accelerator. On top of that, every single simulation of the so-called universe in a box, essentially when you try to take a supercomputer and recreate the universe itself by using various parameters and basically create what we would observe somewhere out there in space, do continuously reinforce the idea of dark matter being completely real. But because the dark matter itself seems to be really difficult to pinpoint, most of the modern studies decided to focus on trying to simulate these universes and then really zoom into the maximum amount to try to see what they can discover on the inside. And what you're seeing on the screen is, as of today, the best possible visualization of what very small halos of dark matter might look like. Every single tiny circle you see, that's essentially tiny pieces of dark matter, roughly around mass of planet Earth, 
all of which form these very very long tunnel like structures that then form even larger structures that eventually form the extremely long and very large cosmic web inside of which each of the galaxies then starts forming with time. And on top of that, every observation we make of the universe seems to reinforce these ideas even more. There really doesn't seem to be a better explanation. Which also of course suggests that whatever the scientists discovered very recently by zooming into the dark matter might also make a lot of sense. And what the scientists in this paper once again confirmed is that, well first of all the galaxies and also various stars and various clusters all started forming inside of these very very massive very large cosmic formations, but all of these formations were initially created by the dark matter. So basically before the first star was born, before the first galaxies were created, this already started to exist. And although the biggest of these structures would contain galactic clusters, really really, really large and very massive structures, the smallest ones could contain things like solar systems and star clusters. In other words, even these smaller tendrils that you see right here, which are also dark matter, would actually contain various star objects, various planetary objects, and in some sense all of this suggests that right now we are also inside of a kind of a smaller dark halo bubble. Now surprisingly, the levels of zoom they were able to achieve here, or the level of detail they were able to see, is somewhat equivalent to looking at the moon from Earth and seeing a tiny tiny insect on the surface. And you can actually see how much they were able to zoom in by looking at one of the illustrations in the paper in the description below. And eventually you'll notice that the zoom itself reaches the cross section of roughly around 80 light years across. Which is the highest and most detailed level we've ever been able to achieve so far. And so assuming the simulations in this paper are correct, this would mean that somewhere along this little hallway that you see right here, you would have a larger chunk of dark matter where the solar system would be located as well, and Earth itself would also be orbiting inside of this little halo of dark matter. But most importantly, other stars would also find themselves along this hallway. And for all we know, one day we might be able to find a way to navigate these dark matter hallways and possibly move across space slightly more efficiently than what we can do right now. Although currently this would be the realm of science fiction, not really actual science. But by identifying the existence of these different types of halos and also by knowing the actual parameters and of course the structure of these halos, we might actually get a better chance of confirming their existence and of course what they're made out of. Because the scientists behind this paper and many other papers believe that these dark matter particles will actually collide with their antiparticles and create all sorts of different radiation that we can technically detect from planet Earth. And more specifically, it's actually a type of a gamma ray radiation that upon detection can only mean dark matter. In the past, there have been similar detections from the outskirts of the galaxy, we've never really found it from somewhere nearby. So if these smaller halos exist as well, we should technically be able to discover some of the more unusual gamma ray radiation coming from very close in the vicinity of planet Earth. But in order to detect this, our current telescopes need to be recalibrated to become more sensitive. But the scientists also suggest that some of these halos might be really really small and not massive enough to contain anything inside of them and could be actually completely by themselves alone somewhere out there in the galaxy. And if suddenly we look at the night skies and discover an unusual patch of gamma ray lights that seem to match the prediction from this paper, it could only mean that we might have detected one of these smaller halos, the ones that are too small to contain anything on the inside. And so the major discovery coming out of this paper is that maybe this is actually what the universe looks like. It's smaller bubbles inside the larger bubbles inside the largest bubbles, which are also connected to one another through these very very long cosmic streams. But this is where predictions sort of end, because we don't really know which particle is responsible for producing dark matter. And depending on the particle, and depending on what type of an exotic particle it is, it could also be producing some other unusual observations. But one of the other surprising discoveries in this paper is the structure of dark matter itself. It seems that no matter how much mass you give to dark matter, whether it's a big halo or a much much smaller one, it seems to have a very similar structure in general. It always seems to have a lot of density on the inside, with density decreasing as you move away from the center. So even though the size and the mass of the halo might be different, even if it's really really small or really really large, 
the structure seems to be for the most part the same. And these tiny halos are just as important as the larger ones, simply because their sheer number seems to add up to a really really large portion of the total dark matter mass, which implies that instead of trying to discover very large dark halos far away from Earth, we should really try to focus on finding much smaller pieces much closer to our own planet. Although that still means that we need much more sensitive and much more precise gamma ray telescopes pointed at various locations in the night skies. But all of these new studies and all of these new simulations and discoveries take us a few steps closer to finally discovering what this unusual matter is and, most importantly, trying to find out how one day we could possibly use this to help humanity. Just like a lot of other discoveries in particle physics and a lot of discoveries in astronomy, this might not really make sense to us right now how and why this is important, but just like every other discovery related to space sciences that eventually led to the invention of, for example, MRI or cell phones, at some point all of these discoveries in regards to dark matter might end up creating something absolutely mind-blowing. But for now, we're just going to keep looking, keep trying to find out what exactly it is, and if it's for some reason something that we just didn't understand about the universe, it will still help us improve our understanding and various technologies that we currently use for a lot of other studies as well. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention about this particular study in regards to dark matter, and you can find more about this in the description below. But once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.